I saw one of these ultrasonic modules for the Pi, an HCSR04 at my uh, local Pi store and thought it would be fun so I picked one up and did some research on it and uh, thought you might be interested in seeing how this works and using it in your own Pi experiments. Let's take a look around. Yeah, the first thing on the tour to notice is it's got a uh, transmitter, T, and a receiver. And it's got four pins. You can see VCC, trigger, echo, and ground. It does run on five volts, so it's kind of an unusual thing. Most of the Pi stuff runs on three volts. So because it runs on five volts, the Pi will supply five volts, but you have to be really careful. You cannot feed back the full five volts into an input pin on the Pi or you'll burn it up. So we have to have a voltage divider, which we'll see back here. There are the four pins. You can see the ground, which is the black wire over here, black wire, that's the first one. The second one is the first part of the voltage divider and that should be the echo, yes, echo. And then the next pin is the trigger which uh, sends out the sonic pulses, it's the thing that starts the sonic pulses running. And then the red wire is just uh, our 5 volts from the Pi. So those are the four connections. Now let's look closely at this voltage divider we have a uh, 4.7k resistor if my memory serves coming out of the echo and it goes down to the yellow wire which the yellow wire this yellow wire which I'm going to wiggle this yellow wire goes to the pi and it's one of our uh, inputs and then we have a uh, a uh, 10k ohm resistor right here which goes to ground so that's pretty much the wiring of course I'll include diagrams and pictures at the end of the video, but that's the uh, walk around of the hardware component. And then on the Pi side, the four wires going in, we have the, this is the five volts from the Pi, this is the ground. On some, on some things I use pin six as the ground, on some I use pin 30 down here. And on the other side we have the trigger, the blue wire, it looks greenish, but it's blue wire and the, for the trigger and the yellow wire for the echo, as we saw earlier. So that's it for the hardware. Not too terrible. A little bit more complex than some things. Got to really be careful about this 5 volts and using the voltage divider because if you plug the, if you bring back in this uh, uh, echo at 5 volts, it will damage your Pi. So you really, really, really got to be careful with that one. So let's see how this works. I've got my device. We're going to measure the distance. Let's start the program and I'll move it around. You can see the program running back and forth back, forth, back, forth, and then we'll let it go. So that should be right. I moved it back and forth so the velocity is zero and the average speed is nine. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, that looks about right. Let's try it an odd number of times. Back, forth, back. And yes, we get a velocity of 1 because we didn't go back and forth an even number of times to erase the, the distance, if we will. And then we got an average speed of 3. So, looks like it checks. Okay, on to the software. Well, here's the code that's behind our velocity and speed measuring uh, setup. And I'm not going to go over this in detail. I've done this in the past. Well, I'll put some links to those videos. Uh, these are just the comments. Uh, this is Python 3 and we're using an HCSR04 and polling to measure velocity and average speed. We're going to go out as usual and grab the uh, GPIO and we're going to import the time library so that we have functions like sleep and time. Uh, trigger, I've set the trigger to pin 11 and the echo to pin 13. These are on the module and then I define them as uh, trigger is output and echo is input. I took a sample of 20, 20 readings to get my uh, average. Uh, offset, I'm not using offset this time, that's uh, the, like the error measurement in the module. Not using it, being a little lazy. SOS is speed of sound at my altitude. And, okay, I'm roughly at sea level, you know, give or take a bit. And then I've got a bunch of variables that I need to keep stuff in. Total distance, average distance, uh, prior distance, and current distance. 
speed, total speed, velocity, total velocity, pulse width. This is the time out and back for the uh, sonic pulse. And this is the time that the pulse began. This is the original time that the pulse ended and the current time that the pulse ended. So we need to keep that. This is more like history and this is current. Distance error. If the, if the object we're measuring is too far away, then I need to have an error flag because it means our measurement's no good. So we start out with false, and then if it uh, gets out of range, we'll set it to true. I'll show you that. Here's our loop from down here to here, where we're going to take the samples. We're going to take 20 samples as per the uh, thing up above, the variable up above. And, okay, so first we set everything to false. We set some sleep time. We let the module settle down. Then we go out here, we trigger the module, we trigger a sonic pulse, and it sends out eight sonic pulses. And we turn it on, we turn it off, and then we begin to wait. So we send out the pulse, we know when the pulse time began, and we wait for that uh, flag back from the module to tell us that it received the pulse. And we record the time when the pulse started, and we rec record the time when the echo of the pulse came back. So then we measure the pulse width, and that is the ping round trip time, uh, which is just the difference between the end and the beginning of the pulse. This is just a debug statement, which gives me some interesting information. I can see what, if things are looking normal. Then we calculate the distance, which is the time out and back times the speed of sound, and then we take half of that because we only want a one-way trip. We don't want the trip back and forth because that would give us a distance that's twice as far as it actually is. Uh, total distance, we save the total distance, we save, actually we save the current distance into the total distance. We add it in there so we have a running total of the distance. Here's where we check to see if things got out of range. If the distance is too far away, we set the distance error flag to true and it tells us that, okay, things have gone bad and this is not a valid reading. Our velocity is just the value of the uh, difference of the two distances divided by the difference of the pulse end, the two pulse ends, the last one and this one. The speed is the absolute value of velocity, so save a little bit of math there. And then what we do is we save the current distance into the historical distance. We want to remember this next time around, so we have a, DT, a dist zero. We're going to store the total speed, we're going to add the speed into total speed, and we're going to add the velocity into total velocity, so we have a sum of these things. Okay, so when all this is done, we're going to drop through and we're going to print what's going on, assuming that everything is okay. So if distant error, so in other words, if it got out of range and we just print an error message and say, oops, the, the error message is, uh, says that it's not a valid reading, that we're out of range, Otherwise, we print the velocity and the average speed. Uh, velocity is the total velocity divided by the sample size, and the average speed is the total speed divided by the sample size also. There it is. And back again. And then we just do GPIO cleanup, and we print done to reset the pi back to its original condition, and then we tell ourselves that the program finished normally. So. And that's it. Okay, a little more complex, but uh, gives us some good information and it's fun to play with. Well, I hope you found it useful and interesting in your pie experiments.